Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube at the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. With hosts Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. We're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We're here at the MIT Information Quality Symposium at the Tang Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Welcome. We've been here all day today. We'll be here all day tomorrow. This is our second MIT CDO forum, information quality forum. Essentially, it's, an informa it's been an information quality conference for the last eight years, uh, but the CDO, the chief data officer, has emerged as a major player uh, in the enterprise, and particularly within regulated industries like financial services and healthcare and, and government, but increasingly seeping into more commercial enterprises. And so this, this event has really taken on that theme. It's a small event, three, 400 people, but very high quality, a lot of MIT folks uh, collaborating. Luis Maldonado is here. He is Vice President of Products at Squirrel, uh, good friends down the street. Welcome, thanks Thank for coming you. on theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me. So what's new <laughs> at, uh, at Squirrel? We you got, had you guys on at Hadoop Summit. We were That's talking right. about that. Um, what's new since we talked to you guys last? Uh, well, we're obviously moving the product forward. That's a big part of what we're doing right now. Um, seeing great customer traction. That, that event was great for us as well. Obviously getting a lot of the, the big data folks in. Um, following on to that, I think new since you last saw us. We, um, we actually were at Splunk Live just recently announced a, uh, a Splunk Hunk connector for Squirrel. So that was pretty exciting. So a lot, of, a lot of our efforts right now are focusing on how do we help people take what we're doing with them at the data management side and helping them visualize it, understand what's, you know, kind of get extract the signal from the noise mm -hmm. as you guys do. Um, really start looking through and finding the analysis and uh, you know, and now analyzing it and looking for the visualization. You know, I, uh, I, remember when, I remember when you guys came out of Stealth Nobody in the big data world was was talking security, right? It was just it was it was all about MapReduce and sure. uh, you know the the potential of big data and the potential value, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then last year, right around Hadoop Summit, things clicked. And I remember it was a good event for you guys because I remember your booth was very crowded and your team was there and very excited. It was almost like there was a an epiphany. Oh, well, security matters, and we don't have a way. Yeah. to secure this data in a granular fashion. Um, so, what happened and, and what, what has been, I presume it was, it sounds like it was greater this year. Oh yeah, it, it continues. So I think it's not unlike what you see in a lot of application development. People think about it afterwards. So they you know, focus on functionality, how do I solve the problem I'm trying to, you know, to, to get through, and then all of a sudden someone says, wait a minute, if you're going to stick all this data there, who's watching it? How am I protecting it? And I think you see a lot of the projects, if you look at the life cycles, a lot of the projects were getting to the point where serious amounts of data were going in there, some of them with some real regulatory uh, concerns, and people started to think about, well, if that's where we're heading, how are we managing that? So I think that's, that's a, it shows the state, the life cycle where the industry is, and, uh, and it's continuing. And I would say, if anything, it's going to continue to increase. We're looking at all the, the data breaches that are going on, you're looking at all the private information that's being stored in these systems, people more and more concerned about it now. So there's a, there's a parallel between what you guys are doing, uh, I think, and, and, and this whole chief data officer sure. theme, because, I mean, who are the industries that are most concerned about security? It's financial services, it's healthcare, healthcare it's the regulated sure. industries, and that's where you're seeing the chief data officer. Are you seeing that parallel emerge? We are, we are. So what's interesting is you see the, you know, the different concerns in an organization come together. You have the folks that are looking at what do I have available for me you know, from a data standpoint to understand, under, you know, analyze, extract, and then you have the other folks that are saying, well, but that's regulated, we have to watch this. Um, recent conversation I had uh, was a, a, someone from the healthcare industry, it's a scientist looking to do some really interesting research. She could not do her research because she wasn't able to bring all the data together. So while she went to the, you know, the, the data side and said, what's available to me for me to be able to do this particular type of uh, genomic research that she was doing, there was actually some concerns about what personal information was coming along with those data sets, not all of it. She just needed to look at certain pieces of it, but you get it all, like all come together. And so there was no way to really extract out the pieces that she needed. Um, so you're seeing these folks kind of come together and saying, how can we create a partnership so how can I get you the data that you need, but how do I manage the regulatory concerns that you know, the other rest of the organization has about this data? So I wonder if we could talk a little bit about 
uh, more about security and, and, and big data and specifically your strategy. So uh, um, when you guys came out, I mean obviously security is your, in fine grain security sure. at the cell level is, is your big differentiator. At the same time, there's a concern, okay, that's a, that's a one trick pony, can, can, can we use Accumulo as a more broad based you know, right. data store? Right. What's happening there? Is, is, is it, is the, are those industries that I mentioned earlier sort of dragging you in, and is that where you're going after the opportunity, getting a foothold and growing from there? Are you seeing more broad based adoption of Accumulo? I wonder if you could talk about that. Sure, um, I think I would say, I'd look at what we've provided as a base. So if you think about you, the start is just the, the proposition of being able to bring all your data together and then have that really fine level of security is almost just how do I enter the game. And then from there, what's most attracted our newest customers have been all the layered capabilities on top of that. So the ability to do graph analytics, that's become really interesting, really important to folks. The search capabilities. But what they know is that when I bring all this data together, that I can secure it, that it will be secure so that if I do a search, that all, all, only the analysts who are allowed to see certain specific pieces of data will see that during their search. The same with a graph. If I'm traversing through and understanding the relationship between analysts or between you know, specific payers in the healthcare industry, I know that there's only pieces that I'm allowed to see will be showing up. So I think that was a, certainly a great way to start, and I'm seeing that you know, where do we take it from here? And each one of these, these industries, the regulations, they know that they're comfortable, they're going to solve that, and then they're looking at functionality now. Now others have talked cell level security. Sure. Um, I remember Jeff, when Intel came out with its Hadoop distribution, they were talking mm -hmm. cell level security. I was like, why don't you just use Accumulo? Well, we might. Um, <laughs> so, and then of course the Intel's yes. now gone a different route. Uh, but others have talked about it, maybe even, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I, I think mm -hmm. others have tried to implement it. Now I know we've had Adam on enough and his immediate response was, right. you can't just bolt it on like that. Right. So I wonder if That's you could right. talk about the state of sort of uh, uh, similar approaches, where are they at and what's different with what you guys do? Yeah, I mean, so I think the, the one that we hear the most about is probably HBase yeah. and people are saying, yeah, we've, we've added on and we're adding these capabilities and yeah, yeah. there's certainly more, there are things you can do by adding it on, there's no doubt. And I think they're doing a great job on involving the HBase code base. Um, there is a difference though when you build it from the ground up and you're building in security at every level of what you do. So the examples I used a minute ago, um, if, you're, if your layered functionality is a search functionality or it's a traversal, graph traversal, that security is built into every single layer. And so I think you have more challenges when you have to add that on and it becomes more complex to use, more complex to manage, than if it's at the heart and core of what you're doing. So that anything you do, and you know that we're maintaining that security at every piece of data. So there's an old saying, better is the enemy of good enough. Um, <laughs> Microsoft has made you know hundreds of billions in market value being good enough. Sure. Is, is, is good enough not good enough in security? I would say it depends on who you're talking to, right? There are definitely some industries that just say, I just need roughly this amount of security. And I've heard even some refer to cell level security as almost data source level security. Maybe that's good enough for certain industries. I know that we're hearing places where they are absolutely sold on the proposition of bringing in multiple data sources, mixing all types of things together to create a better analysis. At that level, they are very concerned. And they're the ones that are saying, that might, let's say I'm a financial services institution, and I'm bringing in from the retail bank, I'm bringing in data from my, you know, from my credit cards, and various, all these different assets coming in. There's personal information in, you know, involved in every single one of these. And if I can't sort through it, I'm not going to be able to go forward to the project that brings all that data together. So I think it's going to depend on the organization. There's certainly some that will have, will be satisfied with, with good enough, but mm -hmm. it's not everywhere. So talk about how you help your customers deal with kind of changing regulatory environments and changing requirements for security. So we had on a number of CDOs today, a couple from healthcare organizations, CDO of uh, Seattle Children's Hospital and the actually the CIO uh, of Partners Healthcare. Um, we talked a little bit about some of the uncertainty with, you know, you just take the Affordable Care Act and you know, courts uh, that are you know, uh, striking down parts of the act. And so there's a lot of uncertainty about what the regulatory environment's going to be. Going to be. Um, how do you help customers have that kind of flexibility needed to adjust to these changing environments? Is sure. that something that's um, relatively easy to do with the Squirrel platform? How do you go about uh, helping yeah. people do that? Honestly, I think it's a lot of our, the flexible model that we have for defining what your security labeling scheme, how you talk about and how you think about security, that's one of the key things that mm. we provide for folks. So just to make it real, um, if, if you're an ACL-based system, 
pretty simple model it might work, but when you've got to change ACLs and you're using it in very low level code level, it's very difficult to evolve and change as you get new regulations. However, if you have a system that thinks about security labeling and how you think about what type of data am I dealing with, and then separately I think about, well, what types of access do my users have, and then bring them together in the system itself, it's very natural for you to evolve that type of model. And you say, well, at this point, these types of roles go away. I might, you know, change the, you know, the types of users that are there. Mm -hmm. Or if I have new um, labels of data, whether it's private information today or it's coded information tomorrow, whatever the new, um, you know, the new label might be, I can bring that together. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it is it's the flexibility of our model. It's not a fixed, you know, here's all the levels that mm -hmm. you get. Here's an ACL based system, etc. So it's not when you're building your application and you set some of these security policies. Uh, that's something that can be adjusted and, and adapted as both your maybe the new data that. Comes comes in, maybe new regulations that might happen, new use cases, um, so it's not a rigid kind of approach. That's right, and, and you know, we support a number of different types of systems. You know, on, you know, we've have, we have customers that are using and in, enhancing and, and working with things like Active Directory, mm -hmm. using Kerberos for authentication. Those types of mechanisms evolve as well. So you might Good decide you know, Active Directory list might be not you know, your, your technology choice in the future. Um, or it might be that you're looking at a different you know, integration point, so you might need to use another authentication mechanism. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of ways that we help you evolve in terms of mechanism as well as policy. Mm -hmm. uh, so switching gears a little bit, so we're here at the Chief Data Officer uh, and Information Quality S Symposium. So I'm curious, so are you seeing this role, the CDO, uh, emerge among your customers? Are you seeing any kind of uh, patterns, maybe in certain vertical markets, maybe yeah. you know, government versus healthcare? Um, what are you seeing in terms of you know, the actual term CDO and the role of chief data officer? Is that something they're actually seeing out in the, in the wild, if you will? Yeah, I, see, I think it's evolving, so I think it's a newer term. Um, I would almost see it parallels to what we saw maybe a year or two ago on data scientists, mm -hmm. where there were a few of them were out there and, <laughs> and they're just becoming more and more. So I think it's the realization that this is an important role. Mm -hmm. And I would say there are a number of our customers that are playing that role, not necessarily with that title. Mm -hmm. They may have other titles, um, but certainly either their you know, data quality, their data science, they have that responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we're seeing more of that, but the concern is absolutely there. Mm -hmm. you know, the ability to bring in there's there's tons of different you know data that they have available to them, but the how you know the efficacy, the quality of it, how clean is it? There's a lot of concerns before they even get to the analysis standpoint. Right. How do I make sure that that all works before I even get it? Yeah, in? well, you've got the governance component, then you've got the actual absolutely. analytics. What do you actually want to do with that data? Um, so, how are your the, your customers? How are you seeing them kind of? tackle those two problems? Are they tackle, tackling them in silos or are they trying to bring those two disciplines together? I've seen, I've seen both. Um, so you see some of the projects, if you start out, you know, there's some, certainly some early projects where people are just trying out and you'll have someone, you know, kind of a rogue project on the side, IT, to be able to test out the functionality. So those tend to grow up and all of a sudden they catch on within the organization and it's later that someone says, okay, now we have to think about what's going in there because we've let the wildness go a little too long. So you see that, but you also see the other approaches where the chief security officer is at the table at the decision point in the project to say, if you're going to do this, then here are the concerns that we have to address. So I've seen both. Um, the latter I've seen probably a little bit more in things in places like financial services. Um, in other places like telco and maybe a couple of more of the tech type companies, you'll see the kind of the you know, new, new projects funded and, and kind of let them grow on their own. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's interesting to see how they're coming together. I do feel like eventually they do meet, and that's where it's interesting to see, well, did, did your technology choice lead you to the point where you can solve these problems? Right. How about um, a, a Cumulo Summit? How was that this oh, year? You had your first, first yeah, Cumulo Summit in asking. June uh, down in D.C., right? That's right, yeah. So talk about that a little first bit. First one out of the gate, so we, um, we co-sponsored. It was um, oversold, so we're happy to say, and first time out. We, you know, New conference, so you never really know the response. But um, it was a lot. It was great to see the Accumulo com uh, community come together. Um, we had everyone from practitioners using it, um, you know, folks in industry, folks in the federal space. We had partners like Cloudera and Hortonworks. A lot of great, uh, a lot of great work that was going on there. So the sessions were great. Um, we put them all up, available for people to, to view. And um, actually, looking forward to another session next year, even bigger. Yeah, now you guys were the, 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 the primary catalyst, obviously, of that event, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and, and continue to presumably want to, want to evolve that. So. We do, we do, but it is still part, it's the Accumulo Summit, so it isn't, you know, it's not the Squirrel Summit, it's definitely... Yeah, but know, somebody's got to drive. That's right, right. <laughs> well, we're happy to help drive, you know, just yeah. like we do, we continue Needs to work leadership. on it. That's right, right. Mm -hmm. that's right. What, so what is the state of the, of the community? Is it, uh, you know, is it a 
largely based in you know the DC area, or is it kind of distributed? It maybe yeah. a Silicon Valley presence, and how active is it? Yeah, well, you see a bit. Of, you certainly see a big pocket in the DC area. Mm -hmm. I think the adoption of Accumulo within the federal space goes without saying that you're going to see a lot of the contract firms, the services firms that are picking it up, building in projects, servicing the agencies. But you also see, you know, we've got Cloudera, we've got Hortonworks that are supporting the, the project as well. We've got contributors. So we are seeing a West Coast presence. Um, I'd like to see more of the community out there as well. So I think maybe even doing a bi-coastal type of event mm -hmm. could, be, could be great. Um, but it's great to see the, you know, all the different types of folks coming together. We even had Splunk there, and mm -hmm. they're excited about our work together. So it was, uh, it's, it's fun to see how it's growing. Um, Contribution-wise, I think you continue to see it grow. We're certainly, it's you know, beyond where we're the only ones at this point, obviously. But uh, there's some really great contributors. I mean, a number of folks see them in person. It's mm -hmm. great to see them. So I know you've worked at some, you know, you come from HP. So you've worked, yeah. at, you've worked at more traditional software companies sure. and hardware companies. Um, how, when you're, how does that compare to working at a startup like Squirrel? Where you've got a also got a community uh, uh, component of your sure. that you have to consider as you're building the product and going yeah. to market. How is that uh, you know kind of transition from the world of HP to the world of Squirrel and the, yeah. some of the open source components, some of the community components? Uh, how's that kind of uh, transition been for you? It's, it's been fun. I think there's there's certainly some parallels. I mean, Vertica we put out a community edition when I was there, mm -hmm. and um, so it was exciting to, to generate. It wasn't open source necessarily, but it was generating that community effect. Um, here it was almost built in from the ground up. Yeah. So I think I love the fact that we're bringing in and allowing others to kind of extend and embrace. And uh, so, but we have to make sure that things we're doing make sense for the platform. Mm -hmm. So just like this last, you know, Accumula release 1.6, contributing more security work to it, continue to foster the base platform. We have some great ideas on what else we like to push down and, and, and let others uh, benefit from. So it's nice to, to kind of help and manage that constituency as while we're still building commercial products. Mm -hmm. So uh, a little different, but there's some good par parallels. Yeah, I mean, is there a challenge in keeping the community engaged and happy versus what's best for Squirrel, the company? I wouldn't say so, because I think a lot of things that we're interested in, they play very well to the mm -hmm. communal community. Um, we can't always put everything we do into, uh, you know, into the open source. I think we all know we have a product that we have to sell as well. Mm -hmm. But um, but I don't think it's it's not you know I've, I've seen some really good parallels in terms of what is what's important to us you know helps everyone in the community as well mm -hmm. so uh, so it's I think that's a fine balance going forward I think the the you know the fun part will be engaging more and more folks and trying to you know have more folks add to it love to see a bigger a bigger broader contributor base as mm -hmm. well what if we could comment on Jeff Jeff's right I mean you were out of company Vertica which was not a legacy data warehouse company mm -hmm. you guys were sort of a disruptor there. Sure. Um, you know, popularized the uh, columnar and uh, and and really brought kind of the MPP philosophy to that world, and it clearly had an impact. There's a prevailing sentiment amongst the large established data platforms that have partnerships with traditional legacy companies like whomever. Pick your favorite company: Teradata, Oracle, dot dot dot. That will position the Hadoop movement as complementary. Uh, in fact, Amar Awadala likes to use the, the analogy of the, the iPhone camera versus the SLR. Hmm. Which business would you want to be in? But that's an aside. <laughs> um, but trying to position it as complementary. The research that we've done suggests that while the data warehouse is not necessarily going away, uh, resources are very clearly moving toward sure. Hadoop very sure. actively. Probably in a more aggressive pay, at a more aggressive pace than the, the new startups that have partnerships with the established players would like you to believe. Mm -hmm. You guys are a startup, you have you know, relationships with established players. Sure. So as unbiased as you possibly can be, <laughs> what's your point of view on that transition? Uh, the data warehouse hasn't, the enterprise data warehouse never really lived up to its promises. That's part of the reason why Vertica came to be. Um, Vertica attacked a lot of those problems but didn't solve them and now the promise of of, of Hadoop and things like Accumulo is that it, it has the potential to solve those problems. So, will it? How disruptive will it be? What's going to happen to the traditional data warehouse yeah. space? Um, it's absolutely it's absolutely evolving, and I think the vendors are realizing that. So um, it was interesting from when I was at Vertica to watch as the vendors were changing already. Um, I think. Movements like SQL on Hadoop and those types of things are, you know, showing the fact that how do I bridge the technology that I used to, you know, support onto this new platform? So I think it naturally is going to evolve. 
Um, it may be happening faster than some like, but I think you'll see vendors taking actions that, that, that kind of support that. I mean, we're just talking mm -hmm. about the Adapt acquisition at, uh, at uh, Teradata. And I think the, the vendors realize that this technology did serve a purpose and it was um, for the, the kind of the state of affairs at the time when it was coming out, it made a lot of sense. And now we have other approaches to it. We have other ways of extending and looking at more, more data, different types, all types of variety, all different challenges. And um, it's the ones that continue to evolve and, and embrace that that I think will survive, but it's absolutely having an effect. All right, Thanks good. Well, we'll leave it there, Lewis. Thanks very much, sure. appreciate you. Actually, one last question. Right. So the bumper sticker, let me go back to June, mm -hmm. Accumulo Summit, because um, you know, this is kind of a little niche show, it's not really your, your wheelhouse, but the Accumulo Summit clearly is as the, the truck was pulling away from Cumulo Summit. What was your bumper sticker uh, that, that you was at the back of the, 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 the truck? What did it say? Ah, that truck that we had there. <laughs> I would say it was extracting out the secure data signal from the noise. <laughs> ah, great. Am I allowed to do that? I love it, of course. We learned the cube. We love that tagline. All right, Luis, thanks very much for coming to the cube. It's great to see you again. All right, Thank keep it right so. there, everybody. We'll be back with Paul Gillen and Jeff Kelly to wrap right after this. This is Dave Vellante. This is the cube. <laughs>